The child support program depends on accurate, up-to-date personal information, names, addresses, social security numbers. Every day, you, as child support professionals, collect, analyze, and use that data. But malicious actors pose a constant threat to data security. You have an important role to keep information private and block unauthorized access to data and systems. This training will cover the following topics. Protecting child support data, understanding threats to child support data security, and understanding legal requirements for protecting data. The success of protecting child support data depends on you. Protecting child support data. Follow these basic steps to stop malicious actors. Restricting access. Always operate on the need to know principle. Limit access to the data to those who need it to complete the task. Login security. Work on government furnished computers and equipment. If working remotely, don't use public Wi Fi. Encrypt your connection through a virtual private network, often referred to as VPN. Use two factor authentication, which asks you through a text or email to confirm it's really you logging in. Password security. Use complex passwords not common names, and include a mix of special characters and numbers. Remember to change your password often. Emailing. Email is a big part of your work. State administrators should use FIPS 140-2 compliant encryption software for emailing personally identifiable information within your state network. Encrypt and send the information as an attachment, not in the body of the email. Send the decryption keys separately via text, phone call, or voicemail. Faxing. When faxing information, notify the recipient before sending. Include a disclaimer notice on the cover sheet. Ensure all pages are transmitted, and have the recipient notify you upon receipt. Mailing. When you must send materials via snail mail, use a double sealed envelope and mark the interior envelope confidential, to be opened by designated official only. If sending personally identifiable information, use UPS, FedEx, or a courier with tracking software. Monitor the tracking status. Notify the recipient that the documents are coming, and have the recipient notify you upon receipt. Storing. Never store federal parent locator service data on shared network drives on your personal computer's local drive, or on portable media, unless it's encrypted with FIPS 140-2 compliant encryption. Destroying. To properly destroy documents, place them in secured containers and use a cross-cut shredder. For electronic media, use a media destruction machine, making sure to erase electronic records first to leave no trace of personally identifiable information. Incident reporting. Data breaches can harm the integrity and reputation of your agency. You must report a suspected or confirmed data incident to your immediate supervisor within one hour. Reportable security incidents include physical break-ins, stolen computers, compromised passwords, unauthorized access to state and federal data, malware attacks. Understanding Threats to Child Support Data Security. Now that we've gone over some of the basics of what you can do, let's talk about some of the techniques cyber criminals use to obtain personal data. Phishing. Phishing attacks are fraudulent emails sent to a wide range of people, pretending to be from a trusted source like a bank or the IRS. Phishing emails may ask you to provide financial information, passwords, or other confidential data. Don't open any suspicious email asking for personal information. Don't click on URL links to reply. These threats are real and pervasive. Use common sense. Ask, why am I getting this email? Does the organization or person seem legitimate or credible? Look for clues like misspellings or bad grammar. Spear phishing. Spear phishing is even more targeted, using language specific to a person or job function. These messages may contain threats if not acted upon and are usually designed to look like they come from your supervisor, IT department, 
or HR staff. Social engineering. Social engineering used for fraudulent purposes means manipulating people through email, text, or phone to ignore normal security measures so that they divulge confidential or sensitive information. This technique employs well-trained people who are conditioned to appear helpful and who may use impersonation, psychology, or sales techniques to achieve their goals. To protect yourself from social engineers, be wary of people asking you to bypass security or procedures. Watch for claims of just verifying your account information. Never give out passwords or account information. Look out for people using tricks or deception to lure you into a sense of urgency or danger if you do not act. We need the money or the person will be harmed, for example. Understanding legal requirements for protecting data. Protecting federal parent locator service data is your legal responsibility. Security compliance. The Social Security Act and the Privacy Act of 1974 set the parameters for agencies prohibiting unauthorized disclosure and governing the penalties and fines for unauthorized access or disclosure. Other areas of interest regarding security compliance include federal guidance. FIPS 140-2 NIST SB 800-53 45 CFR 303.21 Safeguarding and Disclosure of Confidential Information OCSE's Automated Systems for Child Support Enforcement, a guide for states. Electronic Information Exchange Security Requirements and Procedures for state and local agencies exchanging electronic information with the Social Security Administration. An IRS Publication 1075. As a child support agency, you may have access to other federal agencies' information. Now we'll discuss IRS Safeguards Review for users of federal tax information. The IRS conducts safeguards reviews for agencies that receive IRS data. When your agency has an IRS safeguards review, the IRS may do the following. Notify you of the safeguards review approximately 90 to 120 days before the review. Schedule calls to discuss timelines and supporting documentation required for the review. Provide several required documents before and during the on-site review including the Preliminary Security Evaluation Form and the Safeguard Disclosure Security Evaluation Matrix. Conduct technology reviews through subject matter expert interviews and use of scanning technology. Conduct policy, standard, and procedure interviews. Hold closing conference to discuss the preliminary findings report. Critical findings from the review take top priority and require remediation within 30 days of the closing conference. Common IRS Findings Some common IRS findings include, but are not limited to, missing or incomplete policies and procedures and security awareness training, policies without authorizing signatures or lacking review in the last year, running unsupported or unpatched hardware or software, security configurations not aligned with IRS-adopted Center for Internet Security Benchmarks for secure network, server, and software configuration, appropriate level of encryption not enforced. Thank you for doing everything in your power to safeguard state child support and federal parent locator service information. Produced by the Department of Health and Human Services at taxpayer expense.